Kenya is struggling to feed herself in the face of climate change. And farmers are finding it hard to cope with the effects of unpredictable weather patterns. 90% of agricultural production in Kenya is rain-fed. And therefore, reduction in rainfall have direct impact on agricultural production. But there is a way out, climate smart agriculture. Climate smart agriculture is an approach to reorient our agricultural sector to mitigate and to adapt to the effects of climate change. In this show, we are going to find out how farmers are becoming smarter when it comes to countering the effects of climate change from food production to post-harvest management. climate si mzuri sana. Lakini kuna droditorerali crops zile tunapandanga na siku yangi na shida tukipanda kama hizo palmillet, sorghum na pigeon peas. Welcome. My name is Alex Chamada and we begin with our fact sheet. In the recent years, Kenya has been facing food crises. For instance, last year 3.4 million people were food insecure. Fast forward February 2018, Red Cross started a campaign to raise 1 billion Kenya shillings to feed 3.4 million Kenyans facing hunger. This simply means that the country is far from being food secure. The perpetual food crisis in the country has been blamed on a number of issues, among them weak policies, army worm invasion, cartels, post-harvest wastage, outdated farming practices, and declining soil fertility. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, the solution to global food crisis is embracing climate-smart agriculture. The objective of the climate-smart agriculture is to increase agricultural productivity by planting crops that are resilient to climate change. Innovation and technology are key components of climate-smart agriculture. That's the food situation in the country, and like many other countries, Kenya is where it is, partly because of unpredictable weather patterns. However, experts say with innovation, Kenya can do better. We will be analyzing that further. But first, let us begin by understanding where did the rain start beating us, and why climate change should not be taken for granted. That with Elijah Mwangi. Climate change is in no doubt the most considerable environment challenge of our time. The effects of climate change here in the country are well manifested in the recurrent droughts and floods which resort to perpetual food wars throughout the year. But how did we get ourselves here in the first place? Experts have argued that the moment we started burning fossil fuels and cutting down rainforests is the time we gave room for global warming. For a very long time, we were debating whether the climate was changing or not. But the reality is, the climate has changed. It is continuing to change. It is affecting our food security. It's affecting our economic development. It's affecting our incomes. And the reason why the climate is changing is because of uh, global warming. Dr. Richard Munang, the Africa Regional Climate Change Coordinator at UNEP, paints a picture of the grave situation due to global warming. The world is 1.1 degrees warmer, and therefore we are 0.4 degrees less 1.5, and more so 0.9 degrees less 2 degrees. And if we were to hit 2 degrees, agricultural production in African continent will reduce by up to 40%, especially affecting staple crops like maize, like sorghum, like rice, which many households depend on right down here in Kenya and across the African continent. And more so, if we were to hit two degrees, we will see sea level rise. And with the changing climate we hit two degrees, Africa will witness sea level rise 14 times, more than the entire global mean. So what will this mean for African countries? We have almost about 36 countries sharing the coastline of Africa. And right here in Kenya, Mombasa will suffer assets up to about 15 billion US dollars, affecting almost about 117,000 people and forcing many to seek sanctuary in places not their own. And with climate change, food security suffers the most. The agricultural sector is adversely affected and Kenya is losing billions due to ecological degradation. 
as we're speaking today, Africa is losing 68 billion US dollars as a result of ecological degradation. That is almost about 186 million getting down the drain every day. And more so within the context of Kenya, Kenya between 2001 to 2009 have lost about 1.3 to 11 billion US dollars as a result of ecological degradation, ecosystems degradation. And what these figures show is that it contributes, it's actually a loss of about 5% of the GDP of Kenya. With unforgiving Mother Nature, farmers are now changing from the traditional ways of farming. After all, those living in arid and semi-arid areas don't have much option other than embrace the climate-smart agriculture, if at all they have to do crop farming. Because of the changing climate, we are supporting the adoption of climate-smart agriculture. Climate smart agriculture is an approach or a strategy to reorient our agricultural sector to mitigate and to adapt to the effects of climate change. Climate change manifests itself in droughts, flooding, new pests, new diseases. So we are developing uh, drought resistant varieties of crops ranging from maize, sorghum, tea, all, all the 400 crops which we are dealing with, we are reorienting it so that it adapts and mitigates to climate change. In Makueni County, climate smart agriculture is already in practice. Replacing maize with drought tolerant crops such as sorghum, millet, pigeon peas, and green grams is helping farmers overcome the failure of rains and its damaging impact on maize in Makueni County, Eastern Kenya. Lately, maize had taken over traditional crops like sorghum and millet in this region. But for now, Ikrisat Regional Director is advising farmers to shift focus and concentrate on drought-tolerant crops. The crop failure rate has increased, and whether it is going to be more or less, of course we can't tell, but all we are saying is because we have technologies, we have these crops that can manage uh, drought, let us be proactive and have these technologies out of there. When you look at palm millet, the content of zinc is more than what you would need for your daily intake. Uh, if you look at uh, calcium, uh, for these crops, uh, the, the levels of calcium is more than what you have in milk. While Kenya may seem to be on the right track when it comes to climate smart agriculture, the fact is that the country is still lagging behind in embracing smart foods. Let's consider the case of Nigeria, Africa's most populous country. If you take Nigeria, which is the biggest cassava producing country, they passed a policy which intends to ensure that every bread that is produced in Nigeria have 20%, 20% of that production being cassava. And this is not only helping the country to ensure that it can save up to about 3.5 billion US dollars, but it's also creating up to about 2 million jobs for the youth in expanding the entire agro value chain from production to processing to transportation and to market. Back in Kenya, perhaps it's the high time we borrow a leaf from the Nigerians when it comes to matters smart foods. As put by the experts, climate change is real and it's in no doubt that the best way to deal with food crisis in the country is to embrace climate smart agriculture. Thank you Elijah for that backgrounder and one would argue climate change should not be an excuse for inability to feed nations. We sought to find out lessons from within and beyond the region. Kenya is now importing maize from Zambia and the two governments have signed a pact to remove barriers in importation of maize from Zambia to Kenya. So what is Zambia, a country considered to be food secure, doing differently? One thing that has helped us move to that particular position of being food secure is I think on the price side, the institutions called the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, that has also played a, a critical role in terms of stimulating a production by the smallholder farmers. They've been paying uh, above market price, uh, really. 
if you were to consider the uh, demand and supply condition, the private sector tends to pay a slightly lower price than what FRI has been paying the farmers for some time. So farmers have responded to those price incentives. You subsidize them on the production side and the, the, the price incentives, those two, I think has been critical in inducing the farmers to, uh, to increase production. The last two consecutive seasons, we've had a lot of drought. Which drought has affected production? To some farmers, actually, they just has a uh, hundred percent loss. So what we've been doing, advising them on to plant early maturing seeds, and those seeds that are drought resistant, and also to adopt a application of fertilizers, because a healthy plant resists those adverse effects better than a plant that is not having a uh, adequate nutrition. The mixed farming has helped us in a way that uh, even when drought comes in the way it came in last time, it affected mostly the annual crops. Uh, our perennial crops like matoke really uh, came in and supported us. Other things like sweet potato and yams, whatever, people resorted to those ones. So maize failed, but then other crops withstood the, the drought. We now take a short break. Welcome back. We are in Makweni, where there are a number of success stories when it comes to embracing climate smart agriculture. And we begin with Catherine Mbili, a farmer, a determined farmer, who has been trained and has trained others in Mukolecha village. Thank you, Catherine, for welcoming us. Now, tell us, what do you plant here in this farm? In my farm, I plant uh, gadam sorghum, mm -hmm. also green grams, two varieties, N26 and KS20. I also sometimes plant uh, cow peas and also pigeon peas. Pigeon peas. So this is pigeon peas? Yes, this is pigeon uh -huh. peas. Okay. So what has changed over the time? You've told us you are now practicing you call it conservation agriculture? What has changed over the years? What have you experienced when you started practicing conservation agriculture? Of course, since I started practicing uh, conservation agriculture, my yields uh, have gone up. They have increased. Why were you doing this? I, I mean, how is this linked to climate change? Due to climate change, there are several things that occur. For example, the rains that we used to get there before, they are now minimizing. So by, when you do conservation agriculture, we are sure all water will be conserved in the soil. Who introduced you to these new ways of doing farming to counter the effects of climate change? We have several partners, like we have Food and Agricultural Organization. We, since uh, 2014, we have been trained by FAO on uh, conservation agriculture and we started practicing it, like in my group. I have some, I am in a group and there are also group members who, who practice the same. There before I used to plant maize. You know here in Ukambani people plant, they, they like planting uh, maize. Which is a staple food. <laughs> which is the staple food for cambas. But um, the, the maize has not been doing well in our area because of inadequate rain. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you change to... Me, crops that yes, you like think me can, as an yeah. individual, mm. I changed into this and it has helped me a lot because I'm getting high use of sorghum, high use of green grams, mm. high use of pigeon peas. Mbili's story is just one of the many success stories here in Makweni County thanks to Climate Smart Agriculture. As food crisis continues to hit many parts of the country, the story is different in the lower eastern region. From Mukolecha village, we head to Kambiamawe, not so far away from Kaiti River, which passes through Makwini County. By the look of it, you may think the river serves Makwini farmers with plenty of water for their agricultural activities. Well, that's not the case, 
a few weeks ago, this was the state of Kaiti River. It is such unpredictable weather patterns that make farmers here embrace climate smart agriculture. Drought tolerant crops are the most ideal for areas that receive low rainfall throughout the year. For now you can see that uh, this farmer is food secure. So in terms of uh, food scarcity, you reduce the numbers by having uh, as many people as possible food secure in a season like this, uh, for which the main crop, which is maize, has failed. The uh, second thing that is there is that the stover that you have, livestock, uh, is actually having a problem in most areas, even in the highlands. And farmers are buying uh, stover now from the drylands, from these farmers who have planted. A truckload of uh, just the stover alone uh, is about 4,000 shillings. And he is going to sell a kilo of grain for 50 shillings. So you can calculate how much uh, this farmer is going to benefit. So in terms of uh, the community, uh, in terms of food security, we feel that uh, we have made uh, a great contribution uh, for the farmers who had a crop. With proper agronomical practices, farmers are now reaping big from the bumper harvest and it's evident drought tolerant crops can either directly or indirectly help alleviate hunger and poverty in the arid and semi-arid areas. Meanza ukulima kitambo sana, lakini siku anafana pata mapato ya kutosha. Lakini nilipo jua climate ya kwetu ni ya palmillet na sogam na pigeon peas. Sani kabadilika ni kaanza kupanda hizo na mbengu wa sinisubui sana, sababu na saidi wa sana na ikrisati. Na sasa ni kipanda na pata mapato ya kutosha sababu na uza na zingini tunakula nikiwa na watoto wangu. Farmers in Makweni have embraced climate smart agriculture. But according to the Makweni County Agricultural Extension Officer, these areas have unexploited potential. Farmers can do better. You go to a farm which has, which has what harvesting has, has been done thoroughly with the, all the structures put in place and all the recommendations you find that farm it will harvest a crop no matter how the situation is. Another farm which is just nearby there's no water harvesting, nothing. That is the situation. Water harvesting and diversification and also making use of our very much recommended dry drought tolerant crop varieties. We cross over to Tharakanithi County in Marimanti. Lead farmers and community health volunteers routinely go through nutrition training aimed at equipping them with information to sensitize communities to grow and consume the nutritious drought resistant crops. In fact, the community health volunteers go door to door to the community members. They have a very high nutritional value. Again, they are good uh, for the planet because these are crops which utilize uh, little amounts of water, the ones we call the drought-resistant crops. And again, you don't need a lot of chemicals like the pesticides, which are, of course we know, they are not environmentally friendly. While maize, rice and wheat are arguably Kenya's top staple foods, Locals are being encouraged to grow the so-called smart crops like sorghum, millet, cowpeas and green grams. From the places that we have visited, one can tell that the reintroduction of drought-tolerant crops in the arid areas of Kenya rekindles a sense of hope for the farming communities in the country. <laughs> kwa shule mbaya wako sababu wako ni primary school tu na pia mimi kujisomesha sababu hata mimi najaribu kusoma eh, na wana itanisaindia na imaniweka mwaya wasa kuendelea hivyo kutumia inputs sababu nimeona eh, inatua mazao zaindi awwezi minganisha na chakula ingini Important to note is that these achievements can vastly be replicated 
in other parts of the country with similar climatic conditions. Good lessons there, Elijah. And well, we are still in Makweni County. We are at Kaiti River. If you've been following this show, you must have seen some shots of a dry river. This is the river. But Elijah, as you can see now, it's uh, full of water, yeah, of water course. flowing downstream. Sure, of course, long rains are here and that's why we are seeing a lot of water in this river. Mm. But the question has always been, you know, the water harvesting techniques and whether the government can come up with proper mechanisms to take advantage of the rainwater. I remember recently at a water summit in Naivasha, this question came up and the summit was organized by the Water Services Providers Association in collaboration with the national government and county governments and everyone was asking what can we do to harvest water that goes to waste during rainy seasons. Is there something we can do? And the Cabinet Secretary for Water and Sanitation, Simon Chelugui, promised that a water authority is in the offing and this is what he had to say. Our planners are looking at the next sources, conservation, protection of our catchment areas, and also uh, storing. That's why we have established national water storage and harvesting. Their core mandate is to uh, plan uh, going forward where we are going to get our next dams and how we are going to conserve and harvest the rainwater. And this boat will be established in the next two, three months. We should be able to launch that boat. Well, Elijah, Kenyans are hoping that water harvesting will become a reality once and for all, as promised by the Cabinet Secretary. Sure, Alex. We just hope something will be done. And on that note, we wrap up this particular episode of the Chamwada Report. On behalf of the entire crew, thank you so much for watching. My name is Elijah Mwangi. And I'm Alex Chamwada. Bye-bye for now. now.